Good afternoon, this is Heather Quick with the Quick Law Group, and I am talking to you today about contempt and enforcing your court orders. Um, you know, so often in our divorce cases, we are representing women going through the process. We end up going to court or, you know, settling in mediation. And either way, both parties agree to certain terms, whether it's payment of alimony and child support, certain things related to time sharing of the children. And um, the only way to enforce it is to go to court. Um, you do sign binding agreements and also there are instances where you go to trial and the judge makes that decision for you. He decides this is what we are going to, this is what you're gonna pay, this is how much you're gonna see your children and this is how we're gonna divide the assets. So. Many times we um, have women coming in asking, well, this is what the court said he's supposed to do. How do I enforce that? And that is an issue we deal with a lot. And so it's important to talk about that, give you some tips on how we deal with that. I'm just moving around a little bit, I apologize. So um, anyway, I thought someone was coming in. So let's talk about enforcement and contempt. So usually the easiest ways for contempt are the court said or they agreed. Either way, the judge signed it, so you have a court order. Um, and that's the distinguishing factor because we need to look at what is, um, what's going on that is required to do. So let's say it is child support. Now, many states have child support enforcement through the state. And that is a route that is going to happen based on the state's timeline, which is fine and it works really well for a lot of folks. Generally, it takes a while for the state to really try to enforce an action. And you have to look, at, every state is different. Some states are very aggressive and it um, is very helpful to you know men and women who are receiving child support or alimony because the state's gonna actively pursue that for them. But Florida's not one of those, for one. And uh, so, if you are receiving state aid, then the state may actively pursue on your behalf those benefits. Um, if not, you're gonna have to do it on your own and seek some legal advice on the best way to do that. So one of the things we look at is child support is very separate from um, alimony because uh, child support really doesn't have to do with somebody's need um, or ability to pay. There's a court-ordered child support that has to do with their income. And so when they're not paying their court-ordered child support, there can be much stricter sanctions than other things that um, they may not be complying with. So, um, but, so that's for one, for child support. Now, they can, you can, if when a woman comes to me, we're gonna look at, well, are they employed? Do they have a job? Because if so, what we want to do is look at, well, can we garnish their wages? Can we somehow eliminate your ex-husband, the father's control of the payment? Um, just because that's going to make it easier for you. It's going to go through the state. It's going to automatically be deducted and really easier for him. Um, so that's number one. We want to look at that. Is that an available remedy? And, but a lot of times it's not. So uh, in that instance, we want to say, okay, well, do they have money? Because as you know, a judgment is worth the paper it's on. If we can't get the money from him, we really need to evaluate that. Now, in a lot of cases, you, you know, may have, you know, you're separate now, which is good. You're no longer living together and you have, you know, been able to gain your strength to get that freedom. But now are you going to be able to stand up to him and say, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing? That has a, is much to do with your emotional ability to make that decision, which is really standing up to a bully, as much as, well, are the finances there? Um, there's not, you know, what does the court do? Well, if the money's there, they're gonna make them pay. If we can show that there is some money there, the court's gonna say, you're gonna go to jail if you don't pay this within 30 days. Um, they're pretty serious about that. I have seen, um, I've seen that happen many times in my career as a family law attorney. So that option is always available. It's not going to happen the first time they're in contempt, but of course then that depends sometimes on what judge you're in front of. 
a lot of them have very little patience for that so you're gonna see that um, and what they'll say is well if you know the defense is I had to pay my rent and I didn't pay my child support I can tell you that um, that ex-husband um, or father is gonna be looking um, at quite possibly jail time if they don't uh, come up with the amount that they owe and um, begin to make steps forward and you know what we're talking about is just really what to do you have a court order how do I get enforced um, sometimes uh, I had a great case once and it, again it went into that evaluation so definitely when you're looking at enforcing we you have to think about can we collect from this person and the the mother knew that he was coming into money he was going to be selling a house and that he didn't have steady income but he had like twenty five thousand dollars in arrearages and she knew that the money was coming through this house and we were able to move quickly file the papers freeze the proceeds of the sale and she was paid now that was that was money she owed so that's what an arrearage is for years he had not paid child support but we were very strategic in planning that and that that's the key with that you want to really strategically look at everything involved so we'll have a client come in on contempt and it's not a yes or no on that first day the, the main decision that uh, the client needs to make is I am ready emotionally mentally and financially to move forward I'm not going to still I'm not going to continue to be bullied in this way I'm not going to continue to allow the father of my children to shirk his responsibilities or to completely defy court orders Judges do have the power to uh, send people to jail, men and women. I mean, I know we represent women. I've seen many women um, go to jail in other cases for failing to meet their responsibilities and their court order obligations. So it, it's such a, you know, the courts have a lot of power, and if you underestimate a judge's power, uh, that is not a wise thing to do and that's why you need to seek legal counsel and, and look at say okay I'm deciding I am going to move forward I know that it is time for me to stand up for my children um, and for myself frankly I, I came to an agreement we both compromised on things and this is what he's agreed to pay me and our children and he's not doing it um, because I will I tell this to most of my clients and I'm going to tell it to you as well um, he doesn't think you will um, because look at the patterns of your relationship while you were married and how did how'd that go you know did you stand up for yourself did he bully you did he um, really renege on promises or say he's gonna do something and then not or talk his way out of it so it's very unlikely that he thinks you are really gonna go stand up for yourself and file contempt so um, that that's just a big issue on when you have a court order, you have something you've agreed to, and can you hold your husband accountable, your ex-husband, the father of your children, um, accountable to what he's agreed to? And the biggest thing is, you know, he if he's agreed to pay you alimony, he's agreed to give you the proceeds from the house and or um, the... Um, retirement like all of these things he's supposed to do we will get a judge to make him do it you just have to be willing to stand up for yourself and go for it and say you know what this is what I'm entitled to and I am willing both emotionally and um, intellectually ready to stand up for myself that I think has a lot to do with contempt and enforcement more so than it is the money of course I mean you need the money to pay the bills and groceries and buy your children things but it's also what you are entitled to and if your husband is going to do that or not. So, um, sorry, I just had somebody stop in, so I'm gonna have to probably cut this one a little bit short today, but the biggest thing is if you know somebody who has a court order, has an ex-husband, uh, the father of their children, and they have agreed in writing with a court signature, so that's either through the divorce or um, temporary order whatever order it is that is enforceable and they are just maybe they're afraid they're like it doesn't matter um, you know that's the person that needs to reach out and say I need to come and find out how do I enforce this order how do I move forward with my life and hold this person accountable 
for what they agreed to or what a judge told them they needed to do. Um, you know, the paper is only as good as your willingness to enforce it. Um, we do that a lot. And, you know, once we, once you make the decision that you're going to hold them accountable and move forward, we can then go through the process and evaluate all that is necessary and, and if it makes sense financially to move forward, frankly, and how the best way it is to enforce different agreements. Property settlements are a little bit different than late monthly payment supports, so we'd need to look at that and tell you, okay, this is the best way to enforce this, and this is what we know we can get out of it for you because um, what I hate to see is women who go years and are just, yeah, they stood up and they, they went and either got a settlement agreement, got divorced, have a judgment, but now it just sits in the paper and, and your ex-husband walks away, does nothing. Does nothing that he agreed to, nothing that a judge has signed off on that he is supposed to do. You're going to have to stand up and take that initiative to enforce it. And that's what we do for women all the time. And it's like I said, as much standing up for yourself, do not let him bully you anymore and refuse to take care of his obligations. So if you have any questions, any comments, we welcome those. And you can always reach out to us at thequicklawgroup.com. Thank you so much. I will, I have to go. I think I got cut short by somebody coming in the office, but I will, I will follow up on this video and certainly on any comments. Thank you all and have a great day.